welcome to a special edition of the Coronation Street Collection, where we take a look at two very fiery and headstrong people, Len and Elsie. Although we think of Len Fairclough and Elsie Tanner as a couple, their relationship was never straightforward. Both of them spent a considerable amount of time and effort trying to convince the world that they were just good friends. It's Len Fairclough and me that I'm on about. This is the big news of the street at the moment, and that's why I'm here doing my little knot, because I'm sick to flaming death of the chunnering, whispering, nattering and muttering that's going on on every turn and corner. My lawyer said they'd make a statement for them, but I said not to bother, I'd do it myself. So here it is. To whom it may concern, Elsie Tanner and Len Fairclough are not going together, walking out together, stopping in together, living together, having breakfast together, or going to the laundrette together. And if anybody cares to disagree with that statement, they can lend me a paintbrush, and I'll paint it in letters six foot high on the mission hall wall. Now, look, don't walk it's that right, in yourself. Mr. Tatlock, look, I've had my say. My skin's as thick as that counter. I just wish some people would leave other people alone that when they've got trouble, which is nobody's business but his own. Uh, Mrs. Tanner, if it's any help, yes, there are look, some... I know people are different. I just hope that some of you are big enough to stop shoveling muck on other people. Elsie letting the regulars in the Rovers return have a piece of her mind. But did they believe her? Suffering catfish. Suffering catfish, nothing. That's best undercut steak, that is. Oh, it brings tears to my eyes, look. Ah, well, don't wait for me. Get on with it. I've got something to do to the pudding in the kitchen. Oh, Lenny boy, you never had it so good. <laughs> Mate, uh, look, I'm a bit busy at the minute. I've got a little job on this, so uh, I'll come around a bit later on if you don't mind. Ah, oh, come off, you lad. I've come around special. I thought you might like to come around and have a real hot tea. Oh, no, no. It's very nice of you and all that, but I'm already fixed up, you know. I can imagine. Yeah, bread and jam, eh? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not hungry anyway. You know, I can manage. Ah, <laughs> oh, come off, you lad. He's waiting for you. No, well, I tell you what, I'll come around and have it tomorrow. you better get back before it gets cold, hasn't you? Look, I'll come around later don't on. Oh, no. Hey, just got that smell coming through from next door. It's a wonder your belly's not even. It is, mate. Look, Gary, do us a favour, leave me to it, will you? Hey, that's not coming from next door. That's coming from here. Hey, what's going on, then? It's just a couple of scraps are warmed up, hey, you know. for two and all, you're doing all right, aren't you? Looks like you should have invited us round. Hey, I never knew you could cook. Why, were you thinking of marrying me or something? I wouldn't marry you, mate, if you were the last man on earth. Are hey, you going to match on Saturday, Ellie? Because uh, I think it's a good uh, team to have out, you know. They'll have their Next telephone. door. Canaries. Yeah. I recognize a bird when I hear it. Oh, hello, Harry. I just came in to see if his lordship wanted custard or cream. There are some things you just can't keep quiet. Elsie and Len's relationship was to be an on-off affair for many years, although throughout all that time there can be no doubting their affection for each other. They had been childhood sweethearts, but tended to regard each other as siblings rather than lovers. They both married and had children, but the 1960s found those marriages ending in divorce and they were free once again. Len, never known for his shyness, needed someone to persuade him to ask Elsie to go to a dance with him at the rekindling of their friendship. All right, go on, up it home. Quarter to six, isn't it, mate? Go on. Are you going out, love? Yeah, dancing. Hey, uh, Mr. Fairclough's been invited to a dance on Wednesday, Fed Federation of Builders. What's up? Well, uh, I think they're doing good, don't you? We're getting out you of it, all right? Mate, go on, get The up only thing now. that's worrying him is, I think, that he's got nobody to go with him. Oh, I'm sure they'd queue up if they knew. I mean, there's no accounting for taste, is there? Well, he's all right, Mr. Fairclough. Well, I, I mean, he's, he's no oil painting, but he's... Well, he's not what you'd call ugly. Well, I, I think it'd be a smashing do for whoever went with him. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it would, love, yeah. Right, right. Good night, then. Go it on, good be, night, uh, and good night. A, a grand do for whoever go goes on. with him. Go on up it! Ta-ra, then. <laughs> that our darling. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Whitehead. Is uh, is Jim there? Len. Hello, Jim. Len. Hey, uh, no, I won't keep you away from your black puddings too long, mate. You know that um, ticket you were talking about for the Federation dance? Make it a couple, will you? Oh, hello, Len. Hello. Have you done it yet? What? It's winter. 
Uh, no, I wanted you to... You know, I feel dead sorry for Doc. That Walter Burns, the way he carries on. There's been ructions in there. I saw for a 29 11 penny pair of shoes. If it was mine, I'd spit in his eye. Well, what do you want to say? Well, I'll... I, I... Oh, take no notice of him. I have long conversations with myself for hours on end. He never hears a Two word. Two pimples on my heart. Go on, what are we going to say, love? Uh, no, I'll come back when you're not busy. You oh, know, it's a bit... Uh, uh... Dennis? Dennis, love. It's a good job I'm not doing West Side Story, isn't it? Would you like a fag? What are you after? Would you like a fag? I've got one. Well, I've one of mine. They taste nicer. Where are they? At the Rovers. Here's the money. Twenty. Then I'll go. Dennis! Another few coppers and I could have had a drink. Now, I hope it was worth it after all that. So do I. Well, uh, um... Fag, love, for crying out loud. You know that dance that Jerry was talking about the other night? You know, Wednesday night. Go on. Well, I thought I'd go, you know, just give it a try. Just to keep up the Federation jazz, you know. Well? Well. Well, are you coming? Oh, I mean, it might be nice for you. I don't know, Len. I shall have to think about it. I mean... A fellow with your reputation, a girl has to know your intentions. I mean, I shall have to be very careful, won't I? It's only a flaming dance, when else? Yes, I know, but you know what they like round here? The minute their tongues start wagging, they get blisters on them. And I mean, a fellow with your reputation. Oh, all right, if you're frightened, you better talk. Frightened? You know. When is it? You're on. Wednesday night, you're coming. Yeah, of course I am. A fellow with your reputation. Now, let's see, shall have to make an appointment for me air, 14 inch sip, go round to Dots and borrow an evening bag. What time is it? He's a heck of a long time, ain't he? What are you worrying about? I'm not complaining. Relax. Cheers. I feel all right, Tata, drinking out of that. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> thought it was marvellous. You know, it's not the four ale bar, this. And when he turned around, he says, I'm very sorry, sir. We don't serve paints in the cocktail bar. <laughs> oh. Cheers, love. Cheers. Whatever it is. Don't question it tonight, darling. Just close your eyes and plow through, eh? Well, Mr. Fairclough, here we are. Aye, we are, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. No, I've never seen you in a bow tie before. And I've never worn one before, either. Usually gives me blood pressure, these things. I feel all right, Charlie, in this lot. I'm not you kidding. You look all right. So do you. Hey, I like your dress, darling. Yeah, it's um, very me, isn't it? Aye, and then some. <laughs> oh, I don't like music in bars, you know. It makes you think you got to listen to it, doesn't it? Oh, I do. I sort of just let it drift over me. You know, there's something to be said to be drinking in a place where there's carpet on the floor. I don't know. I like the old spit and sawdust myself, you know. Oh, I don't know, Len. You can live too much of your life on linoleum. Do you want another? No, I'm all right. What's the matter with your bag of nerves? I think I miss me pint pot, that's all, you know. No, it's just that I feel a bit funny being in here, you know, with you in uh, different circumstances. You're seeing me in a different light. <laughs> hey, you know, this is living, that's what I always say. What do you always say? This is living, that's what I always say. It was a smashing evening. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Len. With pleasure. You're joking, of course. Hello, Elsie Turner. much more direct than Elsie, so when he finally settled his divorce, he didn't waste much time in calling on her. You're not talking to rubbish when you're talking to me, you know. I get fancied, I do. Oh, I... Must be that shirt. 
grows on me. Grows on you and all. Well, you can't expect me to change my working shirt every day now, can you? No, no, not every week. I think I'd better come round to your place and do a bit of tidying up. Tonight? About midnight? I'm at my peak for spring cleaning. Oh, no, get off. <laughs> Let's go down to our place, eh? No, they talk too much about married men down your street. I'm not a married man. No, you don't act like one either. I'm a gay divorcee. Yes, and I'm what they call nobody's mug. You what? I'm available. I went to London for. But why London? Well, I didn't want to do it on my own doorstep now, did I? But you never let on. I know, I just wanted to sort things out my own way. You see, she wanted a divorce. They're quite happy together, you know. At least she says they are. I see. Well, is it through? Signed and sealed, yeah. What about Stanley? Well, she gets Stanley. I, I thought it might be best, you know. I'm sorry, love. It's not absolute, is it? Absolute in three months' time. Gives you a funny feeling, doesn't it? Oh, it does, doesn't it? Uh, give us that, then, eh? So, if you're doing out uh, round about bonfire night... Oh, no, I'm free. Let's do something to celebrate. Sure. Like getting married. Landlord. Would you like a cup of tea? Uh. <sighs> Do you really think it'd be like that, Elsie? For the first six months, maybe? Sugar and spice and everything nice. At least I'd have somebody to come home to. Somebody to have a good laugh with. Len's always good for a laugh. Somebody to cuddle up to at night. I bet he snores. Ranges all over the bed. Men don't just sleep, you know. They make a big operation of it. What does it take to make a marriage? Companionship? Ah, they've got that. Respect? They've got that. Something else I just can't think of right now. Nelly. What about Nelly? Sitting at home every night while he was out in the boozer. You wouldn't stand for that, Elsie. Ah, Len's all right. But maybe one day... Oh, wake up. You and Brynn isn't going to come charging in here on a big white horse and carry off. How old are you? Too old. Don't want to finish up like Ina Sharples. Ina. Minder of the mission hall. Could be Elsie. Minder of the mission hall. Oh, no. And there's the kids. Linda never liked him. And our Dennis. Where would we live? At his house or at mine? Our Dennis couldn't manage without me. He might think he could, but our Dennis couldn't manage without me. No. Stay there for a minute. I've stood here many a time and thought that I could cope with anything or anybody. Do you love me, Len? Yes, I do. How do you know? I just know. What a habit. You see, I don't love you. Oh, please, it's not through want of thinking about it. Well, that's about it then, isn't it? You're going to hate me for this. And the worst part about it is, is knowing that I'm right. You'll think I'm a fool. We, 
we get on together, we, we fit, we, we belong, we, we get on, but there's more to it than that. I get on with lots of men, but I don't marry them all. You see, I'd always have the feeling that, I, that I'd miss something. Something real. Given up. Oh, I don't know how that sounded. I don't... I don't mean... It's... It's just that I... I want to look for my life. Not just let it find me. Life isn't like that, though, is it? I mean, you just... You take what comes along and you, and you make the best of it, don't you? But that's not what we want, though, is it? Not any tiny bit of love or comfort or something you, you can get from life. I mean, it, you, you've got to grab it. It's only a, a sort of bonus. But if, if you want to say no, okay, then that's all right with me, then. If, if that's the way you want it. It's funny I knew as soon as I walked in. Hi. I've been thinking about what we're talking about. About me saying it wouldn't work. You don't believe me, do you? Look, Len, do you all, don't you? No, I don't. Well, look, supposing I could prove it, fair do's all round. Look, Len, I don't have to do this. I'm only doing it because... Well, I don't want you looking at me the way you're looking at me now. Oh, come off it, Elsie. How can you prove a thing like that? Well, the way I see it, there's only one way. A trial marriage. A what? A trial marriage! <laughs> Elsie's idea of a trial marriage, although it amounted to little more than her cooking a few meals for Len, did prove that they weren't ready to get married, and it wasn't long before Elsie was seeing other men. Nevertheless, when trouble arose, Elsie always turned to Len in her hour of need. <laughs> Trembling like a leaf, what's up with you? It just, it just seemed to collapse. Never went all over the place. And it stopped breathing. What can I do? Sit down. I sit don't want to sit down. down. Sit down. That's the first thing you're going to do. The second thing you're going to do is keep your voice down. Otherwise, we'll have Jerry Booth down here wondering what all the rows about. And thirdly, get that down. I don't, I don't want to. Get drink. it down. Yeah, get it down. Tell me what it's all about. Well, I... I went out to that place for a drink that Annie and Jack told us about. To the Fox and Hound, yeah, go on. And I met this fellow, Bob Maxwell. Yeah, go on. Well, well, we just chatted for a bit and had a drink and... 
Then I was going to go and he offered me a lift home. Oh. No, it's not what you think. It was... It was just a lift home. Only we never got home. We crashed the car. Oh, God. We were just driving along and all of a sudden he gave a little moan and it, it seemed to collapse over the wheel. I, I couldn't do anything. The car went all over the place and we crashed. And, and now he's dead. What? He's dead. No. He is. You're sure? Oh, he's dead all right. I kept... I kept wishing it was all a bad dream. And I'd wake up and find myself at home in my own bed. But I wasn't. What did the police say? I, I never told them. You what? I just... I just got up and ran away. You just got up and left it? Well, you're a right bloody fool, aren't you? He's a married man. Of course he was. They all were there. Len, huh? Len, listen, what else could I do? He had about two minutes to make up my mind what to do. I couldn't bring him back to life, but at least I could save his wife and family from any suffering. What do you mean? Look, look, supposing I had gone to the police, what do you think they'd have said? Me, me, a divorced woman, and never married man. What do you think they'd have thought? I'll tell you what they'd have thought, what you're thinking now, the worst. Maybe you're right, dear. Yeah. I don't know if I'm right. But you just went away and left him, just like that. What else could I do? I... I, I managed to get to the main road and I, I got on an all-night bus. Yeah, I see, look, look, are you all right? You're not hurt, are you? I'm all right. I just banged me out of it and... was my shoulder when the car crashed. I'm okay. Blend. Do you think they'll find him? Bound to eventually. Seems so rotten leaving him there. All alone like that. Funny. A few hours ago I was laughing and talking and, and now he did. Rosie, well, darling, don't think about it. Don't miss so don't worry. <laughs> Come on. Well. I'm taking you home. A good night's kip will do you the world. It's a quarter to four. me for her right mug, haven't you? What's the matter? It's just his wife you want to protect, is that it? Oh, then, please, have I had enough for one day? And so have I. What's the matter? I'll tell you what's the matter. What time did you leave that pub where that fella picked you up? He didn't pick me up. What time did you leave? About 11. It says in this paper here that he died at half past one. Well, what about it? What about it? It doesn't take two and a half hours to get from the Fox and Hounds to Jackson's Lane. It's only three miles. What did you do? Push the flaming car all the way? Is that why I had an attack? Now listen, I've really? listened enough to you. As far as I'm concerned, from now on, you've had it. You can find another shoulder to cry on. But Len couldn't leave Elsie in trouble like that. The bond between them was just too strong. So, when he had some news about the police inquiry, he went to see Elsie again. But with these two, the flashpoint was never very far away. Who told you? The older Ogden. But why should she tell you? Then are you sure she doesn't know anything? Of course she doesn't know anything. You know what a blabbermouth she is. She just blurted it out. The police have been on to Mr. and Mrs. Walker, and then going around with a face like a funeral looking for Mrs. Walker. And she, she'll dine out on this, you know, for the next 24 hours. She will. Too much of a coincidence. What do you mean, a coincidence? Well, if you must know, I told that barman at the Fox and I was there, and he Walker recommended it. Oh, I thought you might. Why didn't you tell me? Because I forgot. It's all right, so you told her. How many people does she talk to overnight? How many people does Emma Ogden talk to overnight? Now, forget it. It's just a routine check. If you think it's a routine check, why did you bother coming out here and telling me the police were around? I'm beginning to regret I ever did. Look, you can forget about the whole thing. You can take my word for that. Yeah, I've taken your word for things before. What's that supposed to be? Oh, about? shut up, Lennon. Let me think. You mind saying that again? Shut up, will you? Elsie, where was he sitting when you left him? What do you mean, where was he sitting? On the front seat or the back? He was... You louse. You filthy little louse. Oh, we're beginning to learn things now, aren't we? Go on. How dare you say such a thing to me? I know I'm just the errand boy, but come on, let's have oh, a pause, shall we? stupid, Len. Stupid! 
That's exactly what I am, isn't it? Stupid, running around like a... with a scalded cock I was after you. Doing everything for you, all the big favour. Who the hell do you think you are, Elsie Tanner? Let me go, Some shining fairy on a Christmas tree. Just have a look. Let me go! Oh, no, Roddy, good look Let me go, you're hurting me! Look at that in there! Have a good look! You call me a louse? What the hell do you think you are? You're nothing. You're, you're just nothing. I don't need you to tell me what I am then, Fergal. I know, because if I did, you'd stick your head in a gas oven. Maybe I do kid myself. Maybe I kid myself because I don't want to stick my head in a gas oven. You can't say two honest words together. You can't look me in the eye and say two honest words together. Because you're nothing. You feel nothing. You just paint and mush, Elsie Tanner. Well, go and call it me again. I'm a louse, am I? Well, I don't kid myself, you know. But I could crawl through a sewer when I think that I asked you to marry me once. You! Bringing up my kid! Well, that's great, that is. You don't need to tell me what you think of me, because if you remember, you turn me down. There were reasons. Yeah, I know what the reasons were and all. And every time you go out touting for a big blonde sailor or a fellow in a pinstripe suit, you turn the knife in my back! So now we know. Yeah. Yeah, now we know. I had to go to someone. Len, you were the only one I could tell. I don't even know how I'm going to tell our Dennis yet. You're not worried about shocking him after all these years, the way you've dragged him up, are you? You've said enough, Len! All right, throw me out then. If you like that, why don't you go? Because I fancy you. Oh, charming. After all that. I don't kid myself, you know. I, uh... Oh, oh. oh, don't start again, then, please. I went round to the Fox and Hounds. What for? Just to see if anyone had noticed you when you were in there last night. Oh, I never thought of that. And did they? The police have been. So they know them? No, that barmaid couldn't give much of a lead. Well, I knew I was in there long enough. Yeah, but she reckons they get a lot of... Gash birds in at night. Picking up fellas. I didn't say that. Well, I'm saying it for you, Hunter. Anyway, you didn't register with that barmaid. It's strange, that, isn't it? No, it's not very strange. She said, you all look alike to her. You were lucky you picked the right pub. Lucky? You know what I mean? Yeah. I think you're in the clear now. What about this morning? What about it? You work me, saying them things about him and me. They still stand. Well, what have you come round for? Because you helped me once. Oh, I see. Return the conscience, favour, making your conscience happy, is it? If you like. Did help you, didn't I? Dave Smith. Perjured myself over that. Yeah. Len. About last night. I, I don't want to know. There's nothing to know. Isn't there? No, look, I told you. We just sat there and talked. We smoked a couple of fags and we talked. He was a nice bloke. He was... He was different. I don't know. We have something in common somehow. Oh, why? Oh, not like that. Look, he had a... He had a car, a nice house and a family. It was just that... He seemed lonely. Oh, yeah, that's a very good line, oh, that one. Then, try and understand. Maybe, maybe lonely's not the right word. Frightened, perhaps. What of? Oh, lots of things. Age, maybe. Uncertainty, you know. And that's all you had in common? Yes, yes. I know it sounds daft now, but that's how it was last night. Oh, I... Oh, I've had enough of this. What are you doing? Well, I should have gone in the first place. I'm going to the police. Oh, you echoes like that won't help anybody. It'll help me. I'm sick to death of people knocking on the door, not knowing it isn't. And you and your rotten insinuations. All right, then. Supposing I believe you. I'm not saying I do, but what are they going to think? Whatever they like. And they will. There'll be an inquest, you know. It's bound to come out. 
In between the lines is going to make built-in reading. Look, Ian, we just talk. Can't you understand? You haven't got a cat in hell's chance of proving that. What do you think? Not after two days, peace and quiet. No, I don't think so. Hello, Weatherfield, double eight, two, five. Oh, yes. So would I. It's never her, is it? Yes, it is. She says it's time she insulted me to my face. She's going to see me tomorrow. And you still don't know who? No. But I will. Tomorrow. Tell me you're surprised, Mrs. Tanner. I told you I'd come. It was you. Of all the people, of the... Of all... But not you. I didn't expect you would. Why should you? There must be hundreds of other women with as much cause to do what I did. Now, now look, Mrs. Maxwell. I'm trying as hard as I know how to control my temper. For heaven knows if I lose it, I don't know what'll happen. So... So shall we just sit down and talk like sensible people? How many other have there been, Mrs. Tanner? How many other marriages have you wrecked? I told you. I told the court. I never met your husband before that night. Oh, look, I'm sorry as anybody for what happened. But it wasn't my fault. Now, the court understood that. Now, why can't you? Then I expect some of their husbands went back to them in the end. You're not the kind men stay with. Now, don't push me too far, Mrs. But Maxwell. my George won't come back to me, will he? Look, he could have been with anybody that night. He had the heart attack. Anybody. But it happened to be my rotten luck. It was me. But it still doesn't make it my fault. Scum! That's what you are. Filthy, rotten scum! I've got nothing left now. Nothing at all without George. He was all I had my whole life. And a tramp like you took him away from me. Right, madam, that's it. Let's help these past few weeks making those phone calls, telling you what you are, the only thing. Oh, oh, no. You don't think it ends there, do you? It doesn't stop as easily as that. <laughs> George, my dear, are you watching? She's frightened now, George. George hates you too. He didn't want to die. He loved me. Get away from that, George. In the old days, they knew what to do to women like you. Oh, yes. They used to take adulteresses and stone them to death. Look, I, I tell you what to do. Why, why don't you just go home and, and lie down? It, it's just that you're upset and get the doctrine. I know I, I got the doctrine when I wasn't. It's all in the Bible, you know. Look, why don't you let me nip across the little It's quite explicit. It, it won't take a minute. Well, I'll just take a line and because it, for it, it won't take a minute. You kill me! That's <laughs> enough, brother! Oh, I let go. Come on, sit down. We must have known, mightn't we? Should have guessed. What's, what? Dennis, go. You go get the coppers on the floor. No, you can't. It's the best thing in the long run. That's broken. Mummy, are you okay? <laughs> Len saving Elsie, Elsie helping Len, a pattern that was to continue for some time. The other residents in the street couldn't help but notice how they felt for one another, and when they fell out over a misunderstanding about a weekend visit Elsie made to her daughter Linda, there were at least one or two people who weren't afraid to speak their minds. Are you unhappy about something this morning, Dennis? Oh, 
No, it's just a bit of a shock when your own mother doesn't even remember her only son's birthday. Your birthday was April the 4th. First, we had that out the other day. Now, belt up. But you still haven't bought me out, though, have oh, you? Do you think I would? No, come to think of it, I Fleming well didn't. Well, then, come in, the door's open. Well, Mrs. Sharper, what can we do for you? I met the postman outside. He couldn't get this little letterbox. It's for you. For me? It's a birthday card, you see. Somebody's remembered, even if you haven't. Happy birthday to my son. Oh, it's from you, Mother. <laughs> oh, no. A quid! Oh! Happy official birthday. Oh, thank you, Mum. I knew you wouldn't forget me birthday. <laughs> I would never have guessed. Well, I'd best get off to work then, hasn't I? Well, what about your breakfast? It's going cold now. I'm not hungry. Enjoy your holiday. What's it got to do with you? I'm going to be texted this morning, aren't we? Well, it's just that some people are too damn nosy, that's all. Well, there's not very much goes on round here that I don't know about. Yeah, and I bet you get all the wrong end of the stick and all. I don't think so. You went to see your Linda. Len Fackle thinks you had a dirty weekend with Dave Smith at Brighton. You know it all, don't you? Yes, and I know something else as well. It's high time you two stopped behaving like a couple of lovesick kids. All right, Mrs. Sharples, when I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Don't you get your hair off of me. I'm not Len Fairclough. Don't speak to me like that. I'm the healthy tanner, you know. You what? I don't boil my cabbages twice. You're the bag of the fags. Oh, all right. There's no need to be ratty, you know. There. Don't say thank you, will you? Hello. Uh... Come in, Mrs. Tanner. She's if you are in, isn't it? Oh, well, uh, I would just pass in, like. Yes, yeah, all right, Jerry. What is it you want? Well, uh, no, really. Like I say, I would just pass in. Yes, and, and I you thought... thought you'd drop in and say hello. Look, love, I wasn't born yesterday. What is it you want? Well, I wanted to have a word with you about Miss, Mr. Fairclough. Oh, aye. What about him? Well, he knows, uh, he knows now about the weekend. Oh, does he? I'm very glad for him. Well, I, I mean, he, he knows, uh, he, he knows that you're at your Linda's, like. Uh, oh, does he now? And did he send you round here? No, he, uh, he, he doesn't know I'm here. Neither do I, Jerry. Oh, oh well, I just thought you'd like to know that he, he knew, like. Uh... Yes, so. Look, Jerry, I dare say you mean well, but look, this is entirely up to Len Fairclough. It's what, he's the one that's been rude. Well, no, I, I mean, it, it was my fault. Uh, and, and any rude, you know what he's like. Oh, yes, and what he's like, he's always ready to think the worst of anybody. Well, no, I mean, he was probably a bit jealous, and like I say, it was my fault for going all the wrong end at sticking. Yes, and you shouldn't jump to the wrong conclusions either. Look, he insulted me, all right? If anybody's going to apologise, it's up to him to make the first move. Yeah, well, uh, what were wrong with you last night? No, what? You never come into Rovers. Yeah, no, I had a bit of paperwork to do, I was... Oh, yeah. Look, I'll tell you why you didn't come. You didn't want to meet Elsie. I should worry about Elsie. Oh, but you do, though. Oh, but I couldn't care less about Elsie. Oh, well, go on, pull the other one. It's got bells on. Why don't you two make it up? Let's drop it, eh? Look, you've had Barnes before and you've made it up. Why don't you go round and see her and tell her you're sorry? I've done now to be sorry for. Oh, no. You only accuse her of having a crafty weekend with Dave. Yeah, well, so it did, well. Well, you're wrong. Yeah, but she didn't deny it, did she? I mean, she admitted it. No need to do that, making a fool of me like that. I'm not going crawling to her, you know. If she wants to apologise, she can come to me. Anyway, I can't stand talking all day. I've got work to do. Where is he? Oh, he's gone in the office. Any luck? No, no, she says it's up to him. How about you? Can't get into budge an inch. Yeah, they're like a couple of mules. One of them laughed him at the first move. If you want to get him to meet, it might be a bit of a start. Hey, that's an idea. Yeah, but how are we going to do that? I mean, he won't go round to see her, and she certainly won't come round look, here. Look, ne neutral territory, that's what we need. Uh, corner shot. I I'll square it up with Emma Ogden. Yeah, but how are we going to get them both there at the same time? Uh, well, look, you, t you tell them that... Uh, the, the David wants to see him about someone. Uh, burst pipe, anything. Yeah. Uh, I'll uh, I'll get hold of Elsie. So, yeah. yeah, just give me about ten minutes. Oh. Well, will there be anything else, Mr. Walker? No, that's all. I expect Mrs. Walker will be in herself this afternoon. Right. Uh, Mr. Walker, what? can I ask you something? As long as it's not for money. Why, why? Well, do you remember when Mrs. Walker was putting up for council? Hey, don't remind me of it. My life wasn't worth living. Why was it that bad? Oh, worse. It was no but council, council, council from morning till night. I weren't half chuffed when she got beaten. It'd have been murder if she got in, you know. There'd be no living with her. 
Oh, hello, Mr. Walker. <coughs> Irma, Irma, I wonder if I could uh, use your phone in back place for a minute. What for? Well, it's a private call, like it's, it's very important. All oh. right, go on, right, then. Right, uh, What was it you wanted to know, then? What? About Mrs. Walker standing for council. Oh, no, nothing. I just wondered what it was like. Uh, you're not standing, are you? Am I? <laughs> oh, hello, Jack. Hello. Uh, has Jerry Bowles been in? Yes, he's in the back running up my telephone. Can I go through? Don't tell me you want to use the phone and all. No, no, I, I, I just want to have a word with Jerry. Go on, help yourself. Thank you very I'm not much. kidding, it's getting like Piccadilly Station in here this morning. Oh, well, I'd best be off. Cheerio. To down, Mr. Walker. Well, everything all right? He's on his way. Ah, ah good. So is Elsie. Champion. Right. Now, what's going on in here? Well, in about two minutes, Len Fairclough and Elsie Tanner are coming in. They're going to kiss and make it up. Oh. Has uh, he been at the bottle again? No, he's, he's right. We've uh, we fixed it. They're, uh, they're going to meet here. Just a minute, Godfrey Wynn. What happens if they don't kiss and make up? You're in short for breakages, aren't you? Yeah. Hey! Oh. What are you doing here? Oh, uh, I, oh, I, I well, actually, just... Len, uh, Jerry came in to cancel his order for his meat and tater pie because he said he wanted to work all through his dinner hour with you being very busy, you know. There's no need to be like that. No, no, he wants to do it, don't you, Jerry? Yes. I got your phone message. What, what did you say? Uh, yes, me and... Oh, now, hang on, hang on, hang on. I think there's a bit of a conspiracy going on. Come here. Oh, well, uh, well, see, we, we uh... We only did it for your own good luck, Mr. Fairclough. Uh, Would somebody mind telling me what's going on? Well, it's daft you two carrying on we like just, that. We just thought that uh, if you, you, if you see, got together like... Well, I mean, you'd make it up. The thing is, he's Cupid and he's stupid. That's a fault round there, you know. There's far too many so-called Cupids. Man. What? You've got egg on your face. Oh, you still got that bottomless teapot? Yes, brewed and waiting. Then what are you waiting for, eh? Their friendship survived, even if their love seemed not to, and when Elsie married Steve Tanner, Len had to work hard to conceal his real feelings. When married, Steve and Elsie set off for America, but things went to work out. Call Lummy, Governor. Word two, the arse of Lords. And this is the voice of them all, returning you to... Come in! Just rehearsing my speech, it's an old merit to being very, very short. I'll tell you, Ian. Uh, no, no, we should be uh, up to oh, uh, Ma'am! Len! It's just a little wedding present, so I'll uh, wander back from whence I come with a gentle trot, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, hello, Len. Hello, love. Uh, I was just telling this... Uh, uh, what's his name here? It's all right. I'll go and see who isn't knocking at the front door. And what's he being all thoughtful about, then? Uh, wedding present. It's one of them... Uh, shaker, what do you call it? Um, cocktail. Shaker. That's right, yeah. Thanks very much. Well, no home should be without them. That's right. I don't know how my grandmother married, you know. Married? I don't know how she did. Mm. Well, I'll uh, wander back now then. And see you when you've changed your name to Tanner. Ben. Yeah? Are you, uh, you are going to the church, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, well, I thought when you called... Elsie, stop it, love. What? You seem to think that somewhere along the line... But I'm upset or hurt about something, don't you? I've known you a long time, Len. You know what I mean, I say. Yeah. Well, I'll be in that church this afternoon, purring like a little Manx Moggy for the pair of you. Not upset, not hurt about anything. Nothing at all, okay? And that's the loveliest wedding gown I've ever seen. You're right. Hey, what's the suit in? Dennis, when you were little, you heard me say to somebody that I had no suspense of somebody or other. Yeah, well, I got you some, didn't I? Yeah. With your Christmas money from... I don't, I don't know. Oh, Mrs. Caldwell. You know... What's wrong? I never had the heart to tell you. They were fellas, suspenders. Oh, 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 he's all right in the taxi. He's been there for the last half hour, right? And rude things on windows. 
take care of yourself. Thank you, Ewan. Thanks for everything, Barry. Whoa. Ian, if you're ever short of an old pearl gown, rather fabulous with a feather duster. <laughs> hey, are we going to get the show on the road or not? Oh, yes, all right, Steve. Just a minute. And, uh, you know that line, don't you, dear, about virtue being its own reward. Well, well, oh, yeah. Oh, nothing. I was just pondering. <laughs> well, goodbye, dear, and all the best. If anyone ever deserved it. Yeah, uh, and the next time they write to me about you, I want to know that you found a nice girlfriend for yourself. Right, I'll see what I can do with that. Look, there's no hurry. I can always phone the pilot and ask him to wait an hour or so, you know. Yes, all right. I'm coming. Okay. So long, folks. Bye. 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 Hey. Yes, Mrs. Sharples? You've got a ladder in your left stocking. Thanks, Mrs. Sharples. I knew I could rely on you. Not long after returning to the street alone, having become disillusioned with life with Steve, Elsie tells Len what life was like in America. She knows she can rely on him to understand. My God. Yeah. Cosy, isn't it? Oh, Elsie. You want to talk to me? Yes. No. Listen. I said no. And I said yes. Well, you want to talk? What about? Oh, for God's sake! Go on, then. Go on, though. No, not yet. It's been a long, long night. What has? These last few weeks. And past lectures from you or from anybody else. So, so do us both a favor and go on. Oh. You honestly think I would? I didn't send for you. What am I supposed to do? Wait till I'm asked? I don't know. It makes no odds. <laughs> Look, let's just sit down and you tell me all about it, okay? What about America? <laughs> you should go there, Len. You really should. They got a flag with 49 stars on it, and all the little kids look like old men. Elsie. Well? You. What's happened to you? Me? What about me? I'm fine. I'm ground. How's yourself? I'm not past stumping you, you know. Why don't you? I've been improvement. You do know what you look like, don't you? Got a good idea. Then come and have a look, then. Come and have a look. That's you in there. If you say so. It's your birthday today, Elsie Tanner. Happy birthday to me. You look a hundred and one. Not, not what? Thanks. Come on, love, this is me. Me, darling, remember? You can talk to me. Auntie Agatha. Too late, Len. You don't tell me it's never too late. I've heard that before. I've heard it all. I don't want to tell you anything. I want you to tell me. Tell you what? The truth. Oh, the truth. Is that all? About why you came back? About why you're conducting yourself like, like a... Like a raving nutcase. Yeah. Maybe I am. I suppose I must be. I'm waiting. Oh, are you? Well, supposing I tell you it's none of your business. Supposing I tell you to clear off out of all here. Right, then go on. Go and say it. What was? I've left Steve. I see. You don't sound exactly astonished. I'm not. Well? Well, what? Yes, for the truth, I told you now. Clear off out of here. No, 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 no. You're not yet. What do you want? Blood? Look, I made a muck of it. I didn't fall. I wasn't pushed. I jumped. So your marriage has gone bust and you think it's all your fault? I said so, didn't I? All right, tell me more. There's nothing to tell. Let's just start at the beginning, shall we? Tell me exactly what happened when you first got out there. Exactly what everybody said would happen. I didn't fit in. I didn't understand them and I didn't try to. I was homesick and I didn't bother to hide it. I was an all-round pain in the neck. I'm not arguing you're a pain in the neck, but you're also a flaming liar. Is that what you kicked my door down to tell me? Now, let's start again, shall we? And this time, the truth. Stinking mess. That's right, it is, and you've got to work yourself out of it. I'll survive, I usually do. Oh, well, see, this isn't some sort of tip between you and Doc Greenhalgh at the shop. This is the lousiest thing that could ever happen to anyone. Do you think I 
don't know that. All right, for heaven's sake, stop hiding behind me in some dark corner. It's here, it's up, it's all here in front of you. So let's talk about it, sanely. Sanely? Yes. Do you think I'm ill? Do you think I'm up a rocker or something? I think you could be it in that way. Well, thanks. Going over and over it in your mind like that. Chasing it round and round like you're blaming yourself. It was me. So you said. Steve was a good man. One of the best. I was lucky to marry him. Shop soiled and, and... People like me don't marry people like him, except in box. Oh, yes, he could have married anyone. He could. His mother told me when she was over last time, she, she said he was the most eligible bachelor. That's right, he had everything. Money, looks, good yes. family, brains. Yes. So the stupid bear has to marry some grotty old has-been from the wrong side of the tracks. What did you say? Well, didn't he? Get out! What, Mr. Superman? <laughs> and that? Well, I ask you. I hate you! Go on then, hate me. Do what the hell you like. No, I don't. I hate him. Oh, no, you can't. You've just said yourself he's perfect. Stop it. He's thoughtful me. and kind, no. loving and considerate. No. He is the perfect husband. No! No! Steve! Is. Go on. I can't say it. He's a swine. Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> now then, tell me. Do you remember before, before I went away, I asked you that if I was your wife and I'd lied to you, what you'd do? I think I said I'd give you a rollicking, or I'll thump you, or both. And I still would. And I said Steve wasn't like that. He was all inside himself. Cold. Like you, like you was made of ice. You mean that time you went away for a few days and stayed with your Linda? You see, you see, when we came back, I thought I, I'd made it up with him. I thought I understood him better. And you didn't? When I got out there, it was worse. Much worse. Worse than it had ever been here. And I hadn't got Linda to run to. Oh, you. Or even our Dennis. Go on, Dennis. See, Steve was almost a stranger there himself. He'd not been back for years. Now, I thought it had, I thought it had sort of bring us together. I thought if we were going to have any problems, it was going to be us and them. And it turned out it was me and them. And you still think it was all your fault? Five minutes back, and he was all part of it. Like he'd never been away. It was like a wall came down. And I was on the outside, looking in. I asked you a question. It's like... Like we were strangers. Oh, nothing dramatic like you read in the Sunday papers. Not the husband having it off with the secretary. Or the wife having it away with the insurance. But I was that's all right, love. It's all a history now, isn't it? Still, what you're saying, <coughs> it, it still makes sense, you know. But when Nellie ran away with Harry Bailey, that was the end of our problem, not the beginning. That was only the, the cherry on the top. The things they did, I didn't know about. The boating, the bridging. Golfing. I could have learned then. Steve was impatient. He wouldn't wait for me to catch up, if, if, if you know what I mean. I can gather. No. No, it wasn't all my fault. The books he read, I couldn't understand. The music he listened to that I didn't know about. But it needn't have mattered, Len. used to sit there, 
night after night, and it, it say nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Then I'd say to him, Steve, talk to me. You know what he'd say? What about? I was his wife, then. And he didn't know what to talk to me about. What was worse? I didn't know what to talk to him about either. I'd sit there thinking and thinking. But there was nothing to say. What about his mother? She didn't seem so bad. She was all right. I wasn't married to her, was I? I was married to her son. And what happened then? Oh, it was fine when we first got out there. One, one round of welcome home parties and, and clam chowder and dry martinis and... Then I stopped being such a novelty. And see, started stopping at the base more and more. Pressure of work? I thought so. Until he started stopping all nights out, too. Women? I don't know. Boots, women, car. I never knew. Didn't you ask him? You can't ask Steve, I told you. Look, if I'd have been your wife, I'd, I'd have been standing at the top of the stairs with a rolling pin in my hand. I bet you were not. He can't ask Steve. He's different. If he doesn't want to answer you, he won't. Who the hell does he think he is, God? No. No, it wasn't all his fault either. It was mine too. You see, I knew I shouldn't have married him. I saw the danger signals. And I closed my eyes. Elsie, I know I'm the last person that should be saying this, but... Do you really think you gave it a fair try? What do you mean? Well, running away like that. I mean, you weren't out there for all that long, were you? I think if you'd have stayed out there a bit longer, it might have got better. Got better? With me on my own? On your own? The week before I came back home, Steve was posted to South America. Why didn't you go with him? Because... My husband didn't want me to go. Are you sure? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure of something else and all. He needn't have gone. Hey? He volunteered. I see. I asked him not to. I said I was willing to try again. I took. I took. What? It seems ridiculous. Two middle-aged people and we couldn't live together. I suppose lovers was too much to ask, but... I'd have settled for friends. And he wouldn't. He said he wanted to go to South America, and that was that. He said he'd done what he wanted for so long, it was too late to change now. Selfish bastard. It was then I asked him if he was sorry he'd married me. And what did he say to that? He said... He said... His first mistake was leaving me 20 years ago. His second... was... coming back to me. So, so, it cleared off and I have flogged my engagement ring and my bits and pieces and I packed my bag and bought myself a ticket. And here I am. A grotty old has-been back in my own mid in. End of story. Is it? Go <laughs> God, I knew. I... <laughs>
When Dennis married and left home, Elsie took Ray Langton in as a lodger, little knowing that he had uh, designs on her. Elsie's need to run to Len whenever any trouble arose came into play when she took Ray in, and again when Steve Tanner returned from America and tried to get back into Elsie's life. When she found that Len had gone to visit Steve, she was more than a little worried. I thought you said you'd got 20 minutes. I have. Well, what's the rush, then? Oh, if you think this is rushing, you ought to see me sometimes. Mexico should know about me. Ah, I like to take things nice and easy myself. Yeah, well, when you get to my age, you... Oh, you shouldn't go on about it. Hmm? Your age. There's no need. Mm, force it, have it. Well, it don't become you. Oh, tell me something. What does? I could hazard a guess. Yeah, well, if you want some hot water, you'll find some in the tap. You'll appreciate you turning up like that. Yeah, what? Yeah, you're not done up at the back here. Let me do it for you. Well, go on with it, then. Go on what? Oh, with flaming zip, you've got it all... Come on, on Mrs Tanner, go on what? Oh, get out of it, can't you? you? told me to go on, Mrs Tanner, doing what? You snotty-nosed little kid. You wouldn't even know how to begin, would you? Thanks for nothing, Mrs Tanner. Yes, nothing. Nothing is right. There's nothing here for you, so crawl out. Well, you've got to get your fun, haven't you? Fun? Yeah, fun. Seeing you lathered up the way you are. Oh, and by the way, you got me wrong. I wouldn't have touched you, Mrs Tanner. Get out! I mean, think of it. Me. We a granny of me own. Down at the tax office, they got a robot down there. And every time it sees my balance sheet, its eyes light up and it goes boop every time. Hello, Elsie, oh, darling. Do try and get me some more receipts, otherwise... Mr. Do you mind most... a minute? I've got some... Well, issues. I'm sorry, Mrs. Tanner. I'm just trying to sort out... I've got a few problems of my own to sort out, too. Oh. I'm sorry, Miss Nugent. Well, I'll do talk... what I can with them tonight. I wish you would, love. And if there's any uh, check stubs with nothing on, just write buns for the elephant and leave it to the robot. Oh, there. really, Mr. Beck? Look. Len, I want him out. Who are you talking about? The chance of the exchequer? The lodger. Oh, you mean the little ray of sunshine? I want him out from under my roof. Well, I did tell you what had happened, love. Yes, you told me. I did warn you. Yes, you did warn me. Oh, now, Elsie, Elsie, come on. Here Look, for I've asked him to go and he won't. He's been trying it on, has he? What do you think? I'm asking you, has he? I said, what do you think? Randy little... Go and wait for me in the Rovers. I'll go with you. Now, I said, wait for me in the Rovers. Elsie, the key. Here's a couple of bottles of light ale to take out, please, take with you. bottles of light ale. There you are, lad. Sorry. Has Fairclough been in? Uh, no, we've not seen him tonight. Miss Nugent said he was doing his books early on. Oh, well. Home sweet home. Hey, give us a pint, Jack, will you? Take away the taste of that cocoa. Oh, this damn towel's up. Huh? Oh, flippy. Oh, cheer up, Elsie. It may never happen. You've uh, got the wrong house, haven't you? No. You have. Hey, out. Oh, what she said. Just that you've been sniffing around. But well, she's a liar. You're the liar. As if I'd chase a middle-aged tart like you. Oh. Oh. believe everything she says. Look, then, just because you live on the other side of that wall doesn't mean to say that I have to count for every single movement of every single minute of every single day. Well, the only thing I feel is like living next door to the baboon house of Bellevue trying to keep the peace here. You dragged me into the cage last night, now what do I do? Why don't you flip? Then I wouldn't be headache or responsibility. I saw the Billy Blue House last, last night because you said that something happened. Now you tell me to forget it. Yes, all right, forget it. Forget I'm sick of Ray Langton. Look, I told you what happened. It doesn't matter what it happened. It matters to me. I told you what happened. Right, tell me again. Come on, tell me again. The truth. Come Look, on, truth. he just... Oh, at 
Then it's over. You said last night that he'd done something. Now, what does that mean? That he grabbed you or he threw a few kisses and Look, I'm the sorry I have a flame and won't drag you into it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm All sorry. All right, don't start ranting. You said he wanted me to sort something out, didn't you? Yes. Now, what have I got to sort out? Yes, my lord. Yes, Mr. Clever. Look, you said he stood Can behind you. Can we stop this now? Because I'm not getting any second-hand cheap thrills out of this if you want. Don't are... you talk to me like that, otherwise I'll lay you out. Oh, well, see, what is it? He... He was... kept looking at me, kept... saying things, huh? I was sick of him looking at me. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Elsie was impressed when Len stood by her, though others suspected her of foul play. She finally put the past behind her and thought that maybe at last it was time to consider Len a little more seriously. But as ever with Elsie, things didn't turn out quite as she expected. Come on, come on. Sorry about this, lady. Longest set of lights in the north of England, these. Corner of Peterloo and Cobden Street. Are you there, number eight? Number four here. I'm going to Cobden Street. Are you there, number eight? Number four, heading for Cobden Street now. What's the fare? All right, number four. Keep your hair on. Pick up a Mr. Fairclough outside Clayton Court flat as soon as you can. Over. A Mr. Fairclough at Clayton Court. I'm two minutes away. We'll be there at nine o'clock. Have you mind? I want to get out here, please. Well, there. I want to get out here, please. Whatever you say, lady. Well? Mrs. Elsie Tanner? Yes! Your husband's Sergeant Stephen Tanner, a member of the American Armed Services. You know he is. Mrs. Tanner, I'm sorry, but I've got... I'm... I'm the bearer of bad news, I'm afraid. Steve? Your husband's dead, Mrs. Tanner. Look, mate, a few more days like this and we're in lumber. I mean, this contract, it needed a flipping chain gang from the start off. And that Stevens bloke's gonna drop dead any minute, you know. He does his whack, he can't do yous and alls. All right, mate, I'll turn in today, don't worry. You reckon they're done with you, then? They let me go. It's your contract, you know. Your business. I'll follow you. All right. Hello, Hello. Any uh, plans? I knew them like the back of my hand a couple of weeks back, but uh, just like hieroglyphics now. Then I didn't tell them. Honest, I didn't tell them anything about that taxi I call. I know you didn't, love. They traced me through a taxi firm. It was broad as daylight. I wonder what took them so long. What happened? Oh, just fingerprints, inquiries, questions, you know. Note, statement. What sort of questions? Not really a statement. Uh, more of a chat. Steve? You. How oh, I was very friendly with you before Nellie went off. How oh, I moved next door to you about a couple of months back. They've done their own work, haven't they? I don't like the way they do it, though. I mean, they do it sideways. If they spat it into your face, I wouldn't mind. But that's all they said about his being friendly. Look, well, they don't think that he fell downstairs. Oh, no, come, surely. They can't make something out of us being friendly. I was friendly with you the same as I was friendly same with... Same as with friendly with who? Now, come on, who? The same as I was friendly with nobody. With nobody? Not even him? The bloke who got you in the end? Len, you wouldn't have been so... You couldn't have been so stupid as to go and... I could. For you. <clears throat> uh, yes, Mr. Foreman? Sir. We find a verdict in accordance with the medical evidence. And we return an open verdict. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Your presence at the Rovers this dinner time was conspicuous by its absence. Never drinking the same pub all the time, mate. You know what I say about some familiarity. I see. I thought you might have gone to the bank. Why, are they giving money away? No asking for it. To the tune of 50 quid. 
You may hear my mail again. Yeah, well, somebody had to. It's accumulating. There's a letter there dated 1941 begging you to rejoin your ship. I've never refused to rejoin my ship. No, but you're making up for it now, aren't you? I'm civic business, mate. Well, what is it this time, then, eh? Overspill, flyover, new ducks for the Park Lake. Pensions for 60-year-old juvenile delinquents. Yeah, well, when you're on our way up to the town hall, will you please try and sort out this overdraft? We want some more stuff, and my charmer's wearing a bit thinner, Alan Roberts. They want paying. It will be done. I want a bird phones you. A bird? I wonder who that could have been. She didn't say. Didn't you know? She said to say thanks and she'll be seeing you. Maybe the wrong number. For somebody, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, hello. You know, that's the 14th time this week we've got through to the Kremlin instead of the uh, North West Electricity Board. I'm losing a fortune here in town. Well, never mind. Before you spend any more money, how about coming and having a couple of pints at the Rovers? Well, what's like up, to... then? What's up? Are you boycotting the place or something? Pressure of civic business, you know. Yeah, he's posing for a statue of the building of him in the square. And it's about time, too. Well, that's the first time I've heard Len Fairclough for a few a pint. And that'll be the last two. Look, I've hardly had time to eat. Ah, well, you're in luck. It just so happens I've got some stew on the stove bubbling over and there's more than enough for me. Look, darling, I'd love to, but some other time, eh? See. Look, Len, that's stuff at Alan Roberts. Will you see to it? I will see to it! Oh, Sitana, you're slipping. Come on in. Stick them in water, I'm going to ask her in, and they might perk up by this evening. Oh, well, I only need to see a white blackbird, and that's the lot. Thank well, you. I'm sure it's not remorse for the remarks that's been made over the years. You wouldn't be wanting anything in exchange, by any chance. Tack never was your strong point, was it? Well, tax is what is known how far you can go too far with somebody, and when's that ever bothered you and me? Still, you want to play at prunes and prisons? Have you noticed anything different about Len Fairclough recently? Why me? He's your long-time friend, isn't he? Well, it's not many people that I have respect for their opinions, but you will have noticed that I've come to you when the pot's been boiling over before, if you remember. Yes, I've forgotten the favour a few weeks later. Oh, well, that's the way I am, isn't it? It's just that I don't bother to do battle with people I don't respect. I don't bother with, to fight with the others. Oh, well, a backhanded compliment's better than none at all. Where's Len Fairclough taking you tonight? And how did that snippet get to you? Yeah, you shouldn't go making arrangements in the rovers when Millie Colwell's around. Them little pink ears of hers, they pick up a bat stricken with laryngitis. I don't know where he's taking me. Probably out to a meal somewhere. It's just that he's got something on his mind, that's all. I know. Oh, she doesn't miss anything, does she? Not much. That lad's knowing the turmoil inside him and he wears a haunted look at times, if you ask me. Mrs. Sharples, do you think there's any remote possibility? Do I think what's remotely possible? Well, it's a bit far-fetched, but... It's just that you've got more instinct going for you than anybody I know. Well, it's not infallible. So if you don't make mistakes, you never make out, do you? Uh, how old's Len Fairclough again? Oh, uh, 40. Oh, aye. It's a sort of a milestone for some of them. It's 45. It suddenly dawns on them that they're not immortal. And that from now on, it's downhill. Yes, well, he has been worrying a bit about his age lately. I'll give you that. Yes, and Len Fairclough's one that's got to come to terms with loneliness and all, and them terms are never very agreeable. Ah, now you're leading up to it, aren't you? Well, I might be trying to lead, read something into it. No, not both of us. At first, I thought it was just me, or not both of us. Tell me something. If he asked you to marry him tonight, what are you going to say? Patty, you okay? All right? Well, not all right. Just sensational. Well, how's the appetite? Uh, considering the fact that those uh, waiters out there have got plates piled up high, waiting to shove them under your nose. Oh, my stomach's touching my backbone. It must be hunger or something. Mm. Oh, what? <laughs> Elsie, will you excuse me for a minute? I've, uh, I've got to make a phone call. Oh. Leave us a cigarette with you, Lynn. Yeah. And uh, don't be too long, will you? I'm hungry. One minute. They won't bring the Chateaubriand until I get back. No. They talk too much about married men down your street. I'm not a married man. You don't act like one, either. I'm a gay divorcee. Yes, and I'm what they call nobody's mug. You what? I'm available. Len. So if you're doing now, 
round about bonfire night. Oh, no, I'm free. Well, let's do something to celebrate. Sure. Like uh, getting married. Ah, oh, no. Now, look, give us a bit of time. Oh, well, if that's all you want. But mind you, I'm going to keep on mothering. Well, of course. You don't think I'd be interested in a fellow who gave up as easy as that? Far away? Hmm? No. Not far away, just long ago. Did you get your phone call? Mm. Thank you. Yep. Well, uh, <coughs> How do you like it? Not bad, is it? Len, I just want to say one thing, and no protests. Okay. You had no need to bring me here to talk to me, you know. I'd have done wonders on Fire Bob at Jackson's chip shop. I know I had no need to bring you here, but supposing I said that I wanted to, how does that grab you? I would have said 25 Bob ahead cover charge is a bit steep. You like him? Oh, nice. It's a burgundy, isn't it? Nuit Saint-Georges. Oh, tell me, how do you tell a good wine from a bad one? You read the wine, yes. <laughs> it's a bit uh, different, though, isn't it? No scrubbers, no fruit machines. No lights. Candlelight. It makes you look a bit more like... Our uh, grandmother. I wasn't going to say that, and I didn't intend to, either. Oh, don't worry. I make no bones about being a grandmother or having a grandchild, either. The fact rather pleases me. From where I'm sitting, the fact rather pleases me. Ah, oh, it's the candlelight, like you said. It flatters my complexion and this music. Puts you in the mood for... Oh, I don't know what. You know that I borrowed 300 quid from Jack Walker? Yes, I... Had heard in a roundabout way. And you know that I've been a bit edgy about my age. Oh, aren't we all? I've been thinking about getting married. You know, you don't want to go on so much about your age, Len. After all, you know what they say, life begins at 40. You don't think age matters too much, then? It's only you that makes it so. No, you get these ideas in your head. You Len, know. what about this 300 quid? I'm not quite with it. Well, it's new carpets in the dining room, new bedroom suite, new olive oil grill with 300 knobs and bits and pieces. Bits and pieces? I want this house right for a woman to move into. It's needed things doing to it for a long time. You seem to have got everything sorted out. That is uh, why I brought you out tonight. I'm definitely getting married. And she's not going to turn me down this time. Do I know the lady? No, love. But I hope you meet her. I think you'll get on. You could. Ray Langton's looking for you. Is he? Says you're in the moon. Janet! has given me up. I'm sorry. And she's given me up because you got her then. Got her? What are you talking about? You want that off me. And don't try to deny it. We were getting on like a house on fire, you know, until you put your big boot in. I didn't warn her off you. All I did was give her a little advice which she asked for. A little advice about what? I told her that she couldn't keep you waiting like this. She had to make her up your own mind to be fair to her. Fair to her? That's very good. And what did you put in her mind then? She didn't want to marry you. She had no intentions of marrying you. I don't believe that. You can believe what you like. I just wanted to, to tell you that you, you didn't have a chance. I don't believe it. Oh, well... What I do believe is the fact that you couldn't bear to see me married to anybody else, could you? To bear to see me happy. Do you know what you are? Go on. Tell me. It might make you feel better. I'll do better than that. <gasps> With Coronation Street's moving to colour, you might have thought that Elsie and Len's life couldn't possibly get more colourful. Well, you would have been wrong. Elsie faced her third marriage, 
but this proved as unhappy as the other two. Once again, Elsie had no one to turn to but Len. I looks towards you. I catches your eye. Do you want a couple of witnesses? Oh! Oh, you came! Oh, that's a marvelous form! Oh, bless you! You want a drink? Oh, love it. Hey! You haven't time, mate. You're quite right. Good lad. You keep me straight. <laughs> A present. Anybody I know? I haven't known her long myself. This uh, dinner time, did you have a good meeting? Just bringing me up to date, you know, the firm. They told you about me, didn't they? Well, they didn't have to. I knew. Len, this dinner time, why didn't you say? Say what? I don't know. You, you were sorry. Condolences. Oh, anything, Len. You want a drop? You do with an aspirin, more like. See, I just hate going home. Excuses I've made this week, the overtime I've done. You see, you get home and you just sit there thinking about all the rows gone past. And they build up. Oh, they blow over and all, and you seem like it's black to normal, but all the time they're pointing in the same direction. And it's just me that's too daft to see it. Ta. You, uh, you've been away, made it worse. How do you make that out? Oh, you know. I don't know. Do you remember that fella that had a heart attack in the car? I was out with him. And afterwards, I came to you and I said I'd left my gloves in the car. You went back and got them. You just went back and got them. It's things like that. I've forgotten that little lot. It wasn't a little lot at the time. It never is. What? Married man has a heart attack in a car. His wife's round the twist. That's their lives wrecked. But you? You're all right. You just go on, carry on till the next mess. I see. I'm all right. I never suffer. You bring it on yourself. You just jump straight in. You never think. Never think? I didn't think about Alan. Let her beat me brains out. And still it goes wrong. You make a mess of it every flip in time. Oh, I suppose the fellas are never to blame, are they? It's a pattern. It must have something to do with you. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You see, I don't cover up. I won't tell lies to myself. Lots of marriages are based on rotten lies. And some people should never get married at all. Thank you. All right, you want to pour your heart out about Alan, but not to me. No, no flies on Alan. I didn't say that. No, oh, should have known, though. Friends, weren't you? All that rubbish about being at sea together, all chaps together. Oh, you're joking, of course. Well, what else is it? Why else are you behaving like this? It's just that he married the woman that I wanted. That's the kind of friend he is. Len, you're not still. No, I'm not. Every time you came a cropper, you turned to me, didn't you? And every time you opened it up again. Oh, you, you turned me down, all right. But would you let me go? Would you hell us like... I've had enough. No, that's not true. I didn't, not on purpose. I didn't mean anything. Not on purpose, but the result was the same. No, it wasn't. When I think of all that stuff that you told me about Steve, and it was me you told. Nobody else, just me. That's... And where did it get me? That's not fair. In a cop shop answering questions as to whether I did him in. For you. Look, Len, this is different. I know it'll work out with Alan. I know it will. In that case, you don't need me. Yes, I do. I've always needed you. But not to weep for you. Because that's what you want me to do. And I can't anymore. I can't. All right. Now I'll tell you something. 
You can't think any less of me than I think of myself. That is just self-pity. Oh, my God, you've changed. It's about time you did. Thank you. For the talk. You're welcome. Oh, that looks tasty. He always did like your grub. This news talking. Very dainty eater. Always was. Dainty you. I remember taking you down to a cafe in Manchester once. Restaurant, please, Len. I never go in cafes. Just after the war, when good grub was hard to come by. Especially in cafes, anyway. I'd ordered pudding and chips. When my chips arrived, they looked as if they'd been cooked in sump oil. I thought you'd never eat that lot. You must have been trying to impress me, taking me down to Manchester. I was. Anyway, when my pudding came out, I shoved the attic. Oh, it looked horrible. Oh, dead soggy. <laughs> I looked across at yours. It had gone. You'd woofed a lot. Your plate was as clean as a whistle. Rubbish, I don't remember that. I thought if she'll eat that, love, she's got an appetite like King Kong. Oh, I bet you thought I looked a bit like him and all. Well, I couldn't really tell, under that big floppy hat you used to have. How old were we then, then? About 20. Yeah, it's a great time to be 20. War was over, slump had finished. We got a few bob in our pockets and we thought the world was ours. It was, darling. So what happened? Hmm? Where did we go wrong? How did we make so many mistakes? You speak for yourself, love. I didn't. Oh, yes, you did. First Nelly and then Stanley. I was only a couple. I didn't make many more. Oh, but dirty great big ones like mine. First Arnold, then Dennis and Steve, and, and now... Now what? Anything, forget it. How about Alan? Has he gone sour too? Elsie? No, I wouldn't say so. It's just that we decided to have, uh, well, I suppose you'd call it a trial separation. Is that why you're down here? Couldn't think of nowhere else to go. What's the problem this time? Has he started drinking again? Oh, he does his share, but not like he used to. We... No, it's uh, not him, it's uh, me. I'm just a bad wife, that's all. You haven't been playing around again, have you? Oh, then, no. I meet thousands of fellas in me, job buyers and all that, but won't say I haven't fancied one or two. I am human, you know. Yes, you were always that. But I was always straight with Alan. No, it was me. I just, I just got restless. Oh, you know, the housewife, bit cooking, cleaning, washing, and how much of that did I ever do round here? Not much. No. Working wife. So I had an excuse not to bother, didn't I? Alan, he's different. He may not look it, but he's very old-fashioned. Likes his tea on the table in time. Likes his shirts washed and ironed and put away in a drawer. Likes a clean pair of socks every day. He didn't get them, did he? Except Sundays. So he fell out. A lot. You never learn, do you, Elsie? Oh, come on, then. There's more to life than washing flaming socks. As much as I wish I was washing him for him now. Get the next train back. I'll take oh. it out of the station. Well, there's no point. My enthusiasm would have wavered by the time we got there. Who do you think it can be? I don't know. It could be anybody. That will let him knock, if you like. Oh, I can't hide in here forever, can I? Well, well, well. You know, that's just what he said, love. Hello, darling. Have you got a minute? I want a word. Oh, I'll have several when she skedaddles and takes this four-legged flea bag with her. <laughs> Where? Well, anywhere, but out of it. Now, look. Look at me when I'm talking to you. You've been wined and dined. Now, off it. Here. Why, Albert? Oh, it was Gail's idea. She said he looked a bit of a scrounger. <laughs> oh, dear old Albert will be pleased. Go on, skedaddle. Come on, love. We know we're not wanted. You know, all I ever wanted in my old age was a bit of peace and quiet. You'll get it, darling, in your old age. Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Uh, Rita's back. Don't be daft. 
She's in Tenerife. She's not, you know. She changed her mind at the airport last night. Changed her mind? Yep. Why? Oh, we're getting married. Fancy. Well, I hope you have better luck than I did. How am I supposed to take that? You're supposed to take it the way it's meant. I hope you have better luck than I did. I really mean that. Well, some marriages work, you know. I mean, yours weren't all bad. Oh, no, not all bad. Just bits. Well, that's what we're hoping for. Well, neither of us think we're going off hand in hand into the sunset forever and ever, amen. No. Well, if it's what you want. It's what we both want. Yeah. You know, she's given up an awful lot to stop here. I think here. what she's gaining. Oh, no bargain. No. No, but I'll do my best. Yeah. She's all right, you know, is Rita. I mean, she is for me. If I work on this, there's no reason why it, it shouldn't be a success. I'm not going to get a third chance. No. Good luck, kid. Be happy. Thank you, darling. See you. When Len married Rita, Elsie took a back seat, but things weren't likely to stay like that, and Rita couldn't help but comment on this obvious fact. All right, silly me. Yeah, hello. 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 Uh, Len, do us a favour, will you? I will if I can, yeah. Well, my sink's blocked up and I've got half a ton of pots in there. Give us a couple of minutes, eh? OK, thanks a lot. See you. Lem, tell me something, will you? What's that? How come whenever I ask you to do out for me, you always say you will when you've got a minute? Yet when Elsie Howard asks you, you're there like a shot. Oh, come on. I'm serious, Len. Well, you know, don't you? I wouldn't be asking if I did, would I, love? That's because she hasn't got a fella around the place to do things for, isn't it? Oh, I see. That's it, is it? She hasn't got a fella. You sure about that? She hasn't got a fella on tap who'll jump every time she whistles. Oh, give over, will you? Don't start that again. Len's kindness and affection for Elsie had lasted for many years and would, no doubt, have lasted for many more. But when Len is killed in an accident, Elsie wanted to comfort Rita and needed comforting by Rita. The two women had so many memories of the man they had both loved and now had lost. Only me. In here. I, uh, just came round to see if there was out I could do. I'm all right. Mavis has been a saint. Are you on your own? Just for now. She's gone to do papers and then she's closing up at tea time. Till tea time. Are you all right? As well as can be expected. Well, you don't look it. You didn't go to bed last night, did you? Well, I wouldn't have slept any road. No, I didn't sleep much either. I just lay there, trying to convince myself it was all a rotten nightmare. Aye, me and all. Only now I know it isn't. It's real. Len's gone. And everything he worked for, everything he built, everything he planned, me and him, all gone. Wiped out in a split second. How can it happen, Elsie? I don't know, kid. Honest, I don't. But I know exactly how you're feeling. Believe me, I do. You know, it's like losing your best mate, your kid brother, and the only pal and the man that you trusted in the whole world, all in one. And there's not much else to lose after that, is there? Not like losing your husband, though, is it? It's half my life, gone, just wiped out. I know. And there's not much I can say to change that. But I still think there's something left to be thankful for. Thankful? Yes, thankful. 
I think I knew Len Fairclough as well as most. And I think you ought to be glad that you met him when you did. And that you had the sound common sense to marry him when you did. And that you had the six best years of your life with him. Six years? It's nothing, is it? Six years with Len Fairclough? You must be joking. It's better than 60 years with some of the fellas that I've met. After such a turbulent relationship, I don't think we can leave Len and Elsie without at least one last look at what made them such an ideal match and when they were happiest in each other's company. You know, to look at us, do you think you were the one with the money in the bank? Oh, well, that's because I spent a bob or two on clothes, that's so. all. You've been working in a meat market or something. If you don't want it, I'll take it back. You know, you're turning into a miser, fair club. Oh, tough, tough. Oh, whatever happened to that fellow that used to give a girl a good time? I can hear it now. It all comes back to me. When you're with Fairclough, you're with the very best. All you have to do is ask whatever happened to him. You're looking at him. What do you want? Proof or something? Yeah, that's it. I want proof. Take us out tonight. Tonight? Tonight, before you've time to skip the country. And I don't want Jackson's chippy. I want the very best. Unless, of course, you've forgotten now. Of course I haven't forgotten now. I'll pick you up at eight o'clock. All right. I'll be ready for you. Do you know? I thought you'd never ask. 